You know, when, when we think about the next generation of manufacturing, I don't want to take a root in Asia. I want to take a root in Atlanta. Yeah. I don't want this nation just to be known for buying and consuming things from other countries. I want to build and sell to other countries products made in the United States of America. I want to stop rewarding businesses that are shipping jobs overseas. I want to reward companies like this one that are creating jobs right here in the United States of America. I want to make sure that our schools are the envy of the world. And that means investing in the men and women who stand in front of the classroom. You know, a, a, a good teacher increases the income of a classroom by over $2,500. A great teacher can help a child move beyond their immediate circumstances, reach out for their dreams. I don't want Washington to defend the status quo, but I don't want them to be just bashing teachers. I want to give schools the resources they need to keep good teachers on the job, and reward the best teachers, and grant schools flexibility to teach with creativity and passion, stop teaching to the test, replace teachers that aren't helping kids learn. I want us to, to, to create in this country the kind of passion and reverence for education that's not just, by the way, a job of government, but it's a job of each of us as parents, as community leaders. Right. And when kids do graduate, I want them to be able to afford to go to college. Right. We've got more tuition debt than credit card debt today. Yeah. And by the way, right now, interest rates are scheduled to go up on student loans in July if Congress does not act, so you guys need to get on Congress about that. And I've said to colleges and universities, you've got to stop tuition from just going up and up and up and up. Yeah. Higher education cannot be a luxury, it is an economic imperative yeah. that every family should be able to afford. Yeah. I want an economy that's supporting the scientists and researchers that'll make sure we discover the next breakthrough in biotechnology yeah. and clean energy. Yes. You know, we have subsidized oil companies for a hundred years. Give them $4 billion worth of tax breaks when they are making near record profits. Get rid of them. It is time to stop giving tax giveaways to an industry that's never been more profitable and start investing in clean energy that can create jobs here in the United States and solar power and wind power and biofuels. We need to give our businesses the best infrastructure in the world. Newer roads and airports, and faster railroads and internet access. You take half the money that we've been spending on the wars in, in Iraq as we phase down the war in Afghanistan. Let's pay down, half, use half of it to pay down our debt. Let's use the other half to do some nation building here at home. Let's put people to work rebuilding schools, rebuilding our bridges, rebuilding our ports. And to pay for this, we've got to have a tax system that is fair. All right. yeah. I was with Warren Buffett a couple days ago. He says, uh, thanks for naming a rule after me. <laughs> we, it's a very simple principle, the Buffett rule. It says, if you make more than a million dollars a year, you should not pay a lower tax rate than your secretary. Right. <laughs> We've said if you make less than $250,000 a year, which is 98% of Americans, right. your taxes shouldn't go up. But folks like me, we can afford to do a little more. Tyler can afford to do a little more, Tyler. He knows he can. You know, when we say that, is it this, this is not class warfare. This is not envy. Right, right. No. This is just basic math. Because if, if, if Tyler or I or others get tax breaks we don't need, weren't asking for, that the country can't afford, That's right. then one of two things are going to happen. Either the deficit goes up, all these other folks, they say they want to do something about the deficit, every single one of their plans actually increases the deficit. Or, alternatively, they got to make up for it by taking it away from 
somebody who really needs it. The student who suddenly sees their interest on their loans going up. The senior who suddenly has to pay more for Medicare. The veteran who's not getting help after having protected us. The family that's trying to get by. It's not right. It's not who we are. I hear a lot of politicians talk about values during election year. You know what? I'm happy to have a values debate. I debate about values. I think about the values my mother and my grandparents taught me. Hard work, that's a value. Looking out for one another, that's a value. I am my brother's keeper, I am my sister's keeper. That is a value. You know, each of us is only here because somebody, somewhere, was looking out for us. It started in the family, but it wasn't just the immediate family. There was somebody in church. There was somebody in the neighborhood. There was the coach of the Little League. There was somebody who made an investment in our country's future. Our, our story has never been about what we can do alone. It's what we do together. We don't win a race for new jobs and middle class security and new businesses with the same old you are on your own economics. I'm telling you, it does not work. It did not work in the decade before the Great Depression. It did not work in the decade before I took office. It won't work now. This is about who we are as a country. The opportunities we've always, always passed on to future generations. I, when I think about Michelle and, 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 and me and where we come from, you know, I know y'all love Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I think about uh, sometimes you know, we'll be in the White House and, and you know, we, we think about my mother-in-law who lives upstairs and was, was a secretary. You know, Michelle's dad uh, uh, had multiple sclerosis and still went to work every day. Blue collar job. My mom raising me a single mom. You know, I, I think about, you know, what they did for us um, and the sacrifices they made. Uh, and so then I think, well, the sacrifices that I have to make, given all the blessings that I've received, they can't just extend to Belia and Sasha. I've got to be thinking about somebody else's kids. That's right. That's right. That's right. I've, I've got to be making sure that uh, somebody else gets a student loan who's maybe a single mom going back to school just Thank like my you. mom Thank was you. able to get a student loan right. so, to get an education. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, we've got to make sure that uh, you know, jobs are out there for folks who are willing to work and overcoming barriers. And I'm willing to make some sacrifices for that. And that makes my life better. Right? Yeah. right. right? Yeah. And, and most of you understand that. You, you understand if you invest in a teacher, and then she teaches somebody who's the next Steve Jobs or invents some cure for a major disease, that makes us all better. Yeah. We invest in Internet services for rural Georgians, there's a little store out there that suddenly business starts booming because they now have a worldwide market through the internet. And that creates economic opportunity for everybody. That idea is not a democratic idea, it is not a republican idea. That is an American idea. Abraham Lincoln understood it. The first republican president during a war invested in the Transcontinental Railroad, National Academy of Sciences, land grant colleges. You know, Dwight Eisenhower, Republican, built interstate highway system. 
Teddy Roosevelt, Republican, called for a progressive income tax. This is not just a democratic idea. This is an American idea that we invest in our future and that we are stronger together than we are on our own. And you know, sometimes that spirit may seem uh, to have vanished in Washington. Sometimes it, it may seem like our politics is just a bad reality show. <laughs> <laughs> People arguing and fussing, all of these other men trying to <laughs> score points. That's right. But you know, out in the country, when I go to town halls, when I go to a VFW hall. You know, that spirit is still there.